Okay. So for the recording, I am Brittany Wright. I am the Community Engagement and Resources Consultant for the Bureau of Library Development. Um, the format of this meeting is rather loose. Uh, the one thing we are discussing is disaster preparedness, but everything else you guys can just sort of discuss as you want or desire is what comes to mind. Um, I don't have to mention the chat because people in the recording aren't going to be able to do that. Um, but if you are listening to this recording later and you would like to be added to the newsletter uh, community connections, or if you would like to be added to the email group, uh, just send me an email. Um, I'm sure you'll be able to find it with the various announcements I send out <laughs> on the listservs. Um, and now I'm trying to remember what I had already covered. <laughs> oh, gosh. Oh, yes. Um, if you, uh, this will also be sent in a follow up email, but um, on the Bureau of Library Development's webpage, we have a section devoted to disaster preparedness and hurricane preparedness. And I recently created a data display about what to do after a hurricane. And also on the website, which is new, is the uh, Wheel of Resources, which will. Uh, has a list of organizations that can help you before, during, and after a disaster. There's um, some resources from, you know, ALA. There's some from D-Plan about, how, you know, how to put together a disaster plan, things of that nature. Um, and the final thing before we, uh, you know, start the conversation on disaster preparedness is that I also write the articles for Stars in the Sunshine State. And if, Daryl, if you could post a link to that, that'd be great. Um, so if you have anything going on in your library that you really want to share with me and with other library staff, you know, let me know. The most recent article uh, that's up is about the animal adoption partnership between the Lake County Library and the Lake County Animal Shelter. Um, but yeah, that is about it. So um, disaster preparedness, if anyone wants to start uh, discussing on that subject. It's mostly just letting you guys go and I'll I'll be here to just sort of gently moderate. <laughs> well, Brittany, can you hear me? Well, um, one of the questions I would I would like to ask or bring up um, that's very very related to disaster preparedness here at um, my library, sometimes we have to open the shelters. And has there been any conversation um, or is, are there any suggestions on um, how, how do people feel about doing any type of library programs within the shelter during the disaster? Um, like the last time we were activated, I think I was at the shelter maybe like four days. And, um, and and I thought that maybe it would be an opportunity to maybe do a program or two during that time period. So I just kind of wanted to maybe bring that up as a subject matter. So I guess I was trying to get an idea of a consensus, what other librarians thought. Would that be a, not a good idea, a good idea? You know, of course, after we get settled in the shelter, would it be something that we could try? Hello, this is Lisa Testa. Can you hear me? Yes. Okay, yes, I'm from the Boca Raton Public Library, and I think you you ask a very good question. Um, we did have to serve as a shelter uh, one year, though um, it was we weren't really that crowded. Um, however, in our preparation to be in shelter mode, one of the components we did plan for was to make sure we had some entertainment or activities um, planned for both children and adults so we incorporate that into our planning so you know some there's some of the low-hanging fruit type of things you know get the board games ready the manipulatives um, 
plan, you know, try to plan different time periods where maybe you'll show a movie uh, in a particular designated space, and it you have to be flexible because some of your, you know, the the room where you may usually show a movie, for example, um, <laughs> would be used for sleeping quarters or something like that. So um, you have to be a little bit creative, um, and um, there, there's just d different things that you could readily uh, plan for um, because I think having some uh, activities to get people engaged with distracts them a little bit and helps to calm them, you know, distract them from their anxiety and whatnot. And it also allows um, some of the shelter staff to um, focus on doing some of their admin or operational stuff that they need. So I, I support that idea. Thank you. Um, this is Mary Ballant at the um, the Panhandle Public Library Cooperative System. I'll turn the camera on here. Um, in 2016, we had Hurricane Michael come through this area and one of our um, libraries, thanks for pointing that out, Casey, um, our, in Calhoun County um, is a shelter. Um, so the library was open as a shelter. Um, but I, I did want to point out that, so while the library is open at, as a shelter, the library staff aren't really considered library staff anymore. Um, so they're not there checking out books to people or doing programs, but they were considered disaster staff. So they're really, their time is spent coordinating um, water uh, distribution, food distribution, sandbag distribution, um, coordinating with FEMA to provide a place where FEMA could set up um, printers or uh, a wireless hotspot. Um, so I think it's a really great idea to, to think of providing um, programs to the people that are in the shelter. I think your staff are going to be so busy doing just the regular kind of activities to try and keep the community going during a natural disaster that there may not be enough people that are able to do that. Uh, Mary, that's a really good point that you made, and um, just uh, to let uh, everyone on the call know that um, our facility uh, to serve as a shelter it was really uh, more limited and targeted to the emer uh, city's emergency um, personnel family, so not the, the, the full general public, so that kind of um, helps a little bit in the you know number of um, potential people that would be utilizing the shelter services, but uh, you definitely make a very important point. Thanks. Okay, does anyone else have anything they want to add about that topic or any other topic related to uh, disaster relief or preparedness? And if not, does anyone have another topic they want to discuss? Really, it's it's really up to y'all as to what gets discussed. If, you know, if you're noticing something at your library that you wanted to sort of just poll the group and see what they're doing, that's perfectly fine. If you want to talk about, I don't know, you can't get alligators off of your front porch and how to get them to scoot, that's also fine. Just, you know, anything that comes to mind is the uh, point of this meeting just to discuss and see uh, how you guys are, you know, just sort of handling things and also what's working well at your library. You know, what have you found? Have you found anything recently or just in general that's really been resonating with your community? Um, I know with like summer coming up, there's a lot of what is the term? There's a lot of like food programs like for like summer meals and that sort of thing coming up. So I know I saw something on Twitter with some uh, one of the libraries doing something with like a food truck or a van or something. 
but yeah, just any anything like that, you know, whatever you guys want to talk about. Or I'll just start throwing out topics. <laughs> So, hi, this is Lisa again. Maybe one question I'd like to just throw out there um, is, I know because different libraries are kind of in different phases of reopening at this point, um, and um, as we transition uh, and deal with the COVID virus. So does anybody have um, uh, anything to share? I'd be interested in hearing what other libraries are dealing with or how they are reopening. Are they reopened yet? And if so, is is it the exact same way as when pre-COVID or are you doing it in stages or phases? And also, uh, is there, uh, has as far as your hurricane preparedness for this year, are there, have you, have you incorporated any plans to deal with people in the shelter mode that, you know, like, do you have your pandemic supplies ready at the ready? Do you have masks ready? Um, stuff like that, because it's a little bit different than previous years. Thanks. Uh, to, my name is Jasmine. I work as a children's librarian at the DeSoto County Li uh, Library. And this summer, we're going to be open, but we're going to have our activities limited. So we can only have like two families at a time with, un uh, you know, try to do under six kids so that we can be a little bit of socially distanced as well as like doing programs and things like that. Um, and for our hurricane preparedness, we usually go to the center and answer phone calls to help the people in the community. So that's as far as I know, but I'm relatively new. So, um, and I actually haven't been working here long enough to have gone through a hurricane, but that is what I've been told. So yeah, we're open for the summer and we're having programs as well as, um, programs where people can come pick up like snack bags uh, for in our community as well. Okay, and if anyone either doesn't have a mic or doesn't want to use their mic, I fully understand. I listened to the first video of this collection and every time I'm surprised that that's what my voice sounds like. <laughs> so if you want to ask your question or thought into the chat, I can just read it out. That's not a problem. I'm perfectly fine with doing that. Uh, I just want to make sure that, you know, this is the most accessible and uh, comfortable meeting it can be. You know, I certainly don't want to be here poking you all with a stick if, you know, <laughs> if you don't want to talk on mic, I fully get that. Hi, I'm Julie Canavino, and I'm with the Nassau County Public Library System. And this has not anything to do with disaster preparedness, but I was just curious what other library sy or systems are doing with their Dr. Seuss books. So we have pulled them off the shelves and have been holding them when they went through the roof as far as her prices on selling on eBay. And I was just kind of curious what the general philosophy is, what people are doing with those books. Are they kind of holding on to them to kind of see what the, happens with the climate or any thoughts on that? Thank you. Hi, this is uh, Oyuki Poletz with the per Booker Town Public Library as well. Um, we actually had a bit of a brouhaha because we had um, reporters show up and, you know, film in our place to make their 
their story for the six o'clock news. So um, what our collection department librarian decided to do was we're just leaving our books right now in our collection. Um, obviously, if they're out of print, they're going to, you know, eventually be weeded. So we're not really hindering access to them. They're still on the um, in, in the stacks, really. So we're just going to, by way of attrition, let them let them go that way. But um, in terms of our other books, I mean, you know, the announcement was made in March, the height of the popularity of Dr. Seuss. So even if we had wanted to pull the books, they weren't on the shelves. They were all out. Mary is saying in the chat that Hernando County is keeping their Dr. Seuss books on the shelf. As usual, no change. Um, I don't know if any libraries have had any issues with the uh, Dr. Seuss books sort of walking off on their own, so to speak, off the shelves. I feel like I was in a different meeting where someone where someone was saying that was a bit of a problem, so they had to put the books in the back, but I don't know if anyone here was having that particular issue. And maybe Casey, maybe you can jog my mind, but I, I'm not sure if you were at that meeting, that might have been Emily. <laughs> Okay, Vicki is also saying that our Dr. Seuss books are on the shelf as usual. And Mary is saying that in Hernando County, there have been no issues with theft to our knowledge. So that's good to hear. That's good. Um, but yeah, no, we do. We definitely do not have to stick to the topic of disaster preparedness. I just try to have at least one uh, concrete topic to start off with, just sort of an icebreaker sort of thing. Um, some other possible topics that was mentioned in the announcement that I can just uh, just sort of remind everyone because I know it's been a little bit. Um, another thing that could be discussed is how to handle your responsibilities as a voter uh, registration agency. I know that's not uh, currently too much of an issue, but um, you know, I know occasionally I do get questions from time to time about what to do about that and how to send in the reports that are due quarterly and that sort of thing. Or also, um, I know at the last meeting, what got a lot of engagement um, was discussing uh, partnerships with local or regional nonprofits or partnerships in general. I can't remember who it was, but somebody was talking about partnering with their local radio station. Um, so there was a lot of cool uh, partnerships going on. I think it was somebody from the Winter Park uh, Public Library. But yeah, partnerships or voter registration agencies or you know, option C, whatever option C may be. Hi, Brittany. I'll comment on the uh, voter registration. Um, this is Ann Hardy from Sarasota. We have, um, I, I've always collected the information for our, for our county on uh, reporting out, and it's always been kind of a simple thing of how many applications we send into the Supervisor of Elections Office. But this past uh, time around, 
I was asked to fill out a lot more information about how many were given out, how, how many applications were, you know, there were there was a lot more detail. And um, it was new to me. I, I hadn't collected some of that information and I'm not exactly sure how much I'm going to be doing of it. it apparently it wasn't um, required, but they suggested it. And I, a lot of the questions I don't think my staff out in my libraries are going to be collecting. So I, I don't know, it does seem more cumbersome. And I don't know if anyone else has any comments or suggestions on how to report that out. But I would be interested in hearing other people's thoughts if they have them. Okay, any any other comments on voter registration? Anyone? <laughs> it's also all right if you don't. I just want to make sure that we don't accidentally skip over any topic in case you know how it is with technology. You hear half the question or you have to step away from a moment. So in case anyone did, we're just discussing um, whether anyone's noticed increased level of uh, work involved with uh, collecting responses and information for uh, voter registration. Yeah, certainly. Mary Jane, if you have something you want to share, go right ahead. <laughs> huh. Okay, so um, I put in the chat that I'm a retired library director and I've been volunteering for the State Library since 2008 when I retired and I still stay active to the profession um, through volunteer work and a topic that's come up for me that um, is prevalent now. I attended a Florida Library Association a webinar on it, an American Library Association webinar on it. And it's the topic of diversity, inclusion, and equity. And I have been wanting to figure out effective ways for myself as a, a as a human being, be someone who considers themselves or hope I am more open to being enlightened on new things in the world and the last episode or the last interaction I had one of the speakers to if did, I don't know if anybody saw the FLA one they, they had three dynamic speakers and one of them kind of rhetorically said that they were sorry that we even had to still have this topic on equity and inclusion and diversity. 
And I just wondered at your local level, either through your governmental entities or through bylaw changes. I'm on my board at Florida State University and our president, a couple of, uh, well, the past year has asked all boards to look at inclusion language in our bylaws. And I even went to, um, I'm retired, I, my first half of my career was Leon County Youth Services, really strong on youth services. And then the last year as library director in, in um, St. Augustine, Florida, St. John's County. When I went to talk, I'm in Rotary with the city manager and the city mayor. And I brought this up to them, like, okay, what are we doing here in St. John's County? And everybody's kind of saying to me, well, you don't go up and just say, let's start talking about it. So anybody out there have any words of wisdom or comments or thoughts? Um, I'm, I'm just so open across the board. And, and Brittany, I asked you this, I think already, but I could be wrong. I've always, well, now I get it. I noticed you have they, them beside your name, Brittany. And I initially did not understand what that meant. And then when I asked our dean and talked to other people, it's mostly for a sign for, for us as a group to indicate acceptance of inclusion to others. Do, Help me out here, Brittany. Anybody else? Is this a topic of interest out there, or are we out there winging it solo and we don't know what we're up? We don't know how to go about it. Talk, Brittany. <laughs> <laughs> well, I will say for you know the Bureau of Library Development, we did just recently start a uh, diversity, equity, and inclusion book club. Um, oh. So we're, um, we haven't picked like a book as a group to read, but we do have a nice document of, um, you know, books that do promote that um, occasional like links to conference, not conferences, uh, webinars. Uh, I was thinking of a conference that's coming up, the People oh. of Color in Library Sciences Conference, which is about community in something. The registration is on June 15th. If you just, if you like search for POC and LIS, you'll probably okay. find it. Um, that's in July. But uh, yeah, I will say for the Bureau, we're, we're working on that and we're, you know, trying to take as many webinars and courses as we, as we can to, you know, promote and learn more about, uh, you know, diversity, equity and inclusion. Um, I know the Oregon State Library Casey might have to help me with this. I can't. I can't remember that document that we looked at, but they had put out a, um, like basically like a DEI toolkit for mm -hmm. uh -huh. libraries. And I'm going to make a note because I will try to include that in the follow up email. Up, oh, Cindy Ooh. has just come in. She knows stuff too over there in Gainesville. Yeah, it ha it really has been a very long time, Casey. But um, I guess also to answer your question, the main reason why I put my pronouns yes. in my name is just so I don't get misgendered. <laughs> okay, okay. Um, yeah, because they them is well, it's it's one of my pronouns. I actually have a lot of pronouns that don't fit, but <laughs> they okay. them is fine. So um, you know, you know, I am Brittany. They are awesome. They are running this meeting. Hi, Cindy. Cindy is here. Yes. <laughs> um, Cindy. And Please call yeah, me. so basically <laughs> um, with with the pronoun thing, it's entirely, you know, it's optional. We never want to force people to be like, hey, put your pronouns in your sure. in your name. But if you know, if you feel comfortable and it just sort of signals, um, you know, when enough people do it, they're like, hey, you know, this is cool. You can put your you can put your pronouns here and it'll be fine and no one's going to you know, nothing's gonna happen. And I've never had an issue where someone's like, hey, what? why do you have that? It's like, it's it's totally fine and normal and it's nice. Hi, yeah, Cindy, this is, you just, um, yeah. whoops, sorry. I was gonna say something, Oyuki from the Bookerton Public Library. Um, This year we have taken in the um, admin team and in our library, we, we have been more, 
I guess, more um, assertive of in, our, in our efforts to make sure that we are covering our diversity, equity, and inclusion. So we have allowed staff to obviously take webinars. Um, the whole admin team participated in the um, certificate through the University of South Florida. They did one of these, um, it was diversity, equity, and workplace certificate that was free. And it was like a seven, it was like 14 hour certificate. And that was really interesting because it came from the point of view of, of businesses. So it was just always, you know, fascinating for, I think, for libraries to put themselves in that point of view. Um, so it was really, it was really well done. Um, I highly encourage you to, to see when they'll offer it next. They did that. Um, I think this is the second time that they've offered it. And, you know, you can take it at your own course, but it really brought about different modules of how to think about diversity not only in terms of you know do you have a diverse workforce in terms of women men you know um religion so it was really it was really well done i thought um lisa also is saying the same thing in, in the comments um and then would in addition you, to that i'm sorry to interrupt you but i yeah. would love whatever that source is and oh, either yeah. get it to Brittany who can share it with us because my board, um, my leadership board in Tallahassee, we are trying to figure out how to do a, an orientation on that topic to our board. And I loved what you said about the modules. Yeah, so I put the Love link it. to the uh, oh, okay. information. It's awesome. it, again, it's through the University of South Florida. So um, it was okay. well done. Cool. Um, we also are doing a diversity audit of our collection. So our collection developments librarian has been, um, you know, taking classes, doing uh, coursework, I think, through Library Journal. Um, and so right now we are going through the audit in our collection. So everyone's participating just to make to, to evaluate and see, you know, how does our collection skew. So, um, so we're just taking, you know, little baby steps within our organization. I think our next step is to gather all the staff that have been involved in all this training and just to see like, okay, what's the next step in, in, um, you know, for us. Where are you located, please? Uh, Palm Beach County. We're the, we're the city that's the last one in Palm Beach County before you go into Broward. So South East Florida. Okay. Are you talking Palm Beach County Public Library System? No, we are oh. a municipal library, but go to a public it. library. Got it, got it, got it. Okay, thank you. This is also very important to me because I'm on, I'm the only PO I see in the uh, in the admin team, so you know it, it ah. helps too. Um, because I'm not the one, you know, I don't have to explain everything. Like now, people are learning about it, you know, so. Mm -hmm it makes it easier to present information because we have a common language so that's how that's how we started our um our journey it was like can we all at least get on board with like what is what is the language they're all we're going to use you know what i'm saying because sometimes yeah. there is so many different concepts that you can um get lost right in all the acronyms so thank you for speaking up i loved your sharing thank you yeah, that was really, really informative. Thank you. Um, and just in case anyone else is a person of color who's chilling out in this chat, I did want to take a quick moment just to mention that um, one of the communities that I've been getting into for library science is uh, the We Hear community. And I believe, I think registration may have closed. I've months and days no longer have any meaning. Um, but there is one coming up, I want to say next week about the I, I cannot remember, so let me not talk extemporaneously. I'll try to find the link for that. Um, but it's a nice opportunity for people of color to be in community and discuss library and information sciences, services, both. You'd think by now I'd know what the S stands for, but <laughs> that's the problem with acronyms. But yes, it's a very nice community. I got to attend one of the webinars they had about, oh yes, it was about uh, POC mental health. Uh, it was very illuminating, enlightening, and thank you, Casey. Okay, so I don't feel as bad. My background is not in library sciences. My background is in ancient Greek mythology and history oh and material culture. <laughs> okay, wow. So if you want to talk about Athenian vase painting, yes. <laughs> if you want me to remember what the S in LIS stands for, not 
not so much. Not so much. Would yes, you it's an excellent community. There's so <laughs> many people on this chat that will you try to include all that when you send us out? Because I can't make all my notes that quick, but you're getting some good. Uh, yes, web, definitely. Yeah. Um, awesome. The follow up email will likely go out next week because I'm actually only here for this meeting. I'm actually gotcha. on a semi vacation, but I came back for y'all. Well, thank you. <laughs> Uh, but yes, uh, the follow up email will include uh, pretty much uh, it will include a copy of the chat and any other uh, links. I usually try to clean it up a bit and format it. So usually I believe I put the links at the end just so if people want to read the chat. They can read the chat. If you want to scroll to the bottom and just find all the links and everything that people were talking about, you can get to that as well. Um, but don't think I'm wrapping up. We still have another, you know, 20 ish minutes or so. I'm just uh, thinking of them, thinking of these ideas as they come to me. But yes, uh, definitely all of this will be collected. And again, this is being recorded. So all of this discussion will be saved and put on the YouTube, which is great because sometimes I forget what we talk about since it is quarterly. Um, speaking of the timing, not to distract from the diversity thing, but um, so we can keep talking about that. If just in the chat, though, I've been curious because I have gotten a couple of emails from people saying that they have something else going on during this time slot. Uh, I am completely flexible is, in terms of like what day and time, except for Tuesdays, but <laughs> for the most part, uh, mo what days and times, uh, you know, you all want to meet. So if anyone knows like your like library staff or you, you know, specifically can't usually make Wednesdays at two, you can also just email me. You don't have to put it in the chat, but if there's like a day or a time that works better for you, please let me know. I'm totally open to moving it to Thursdays, Mondays, Fridays. I'm not sure you guys want to meet on a Monday. I know I'm a bit fuzzy brained on Monday, but yeah, if there's another time or date that works, a uh, day that works for you, just let me know. <laughs> yeah, I'm with Cindy, no Mondays. <laughs> so another day that is maybe Wednesday through Friday, so somewhere on that area. But yeah, just let me know. But um, yes, diversity. I love talking about diversity. If we hadn't come up with a new topic, I was actually going to ask what everyone was doing for Pride Month. I am so excited that it's Pride Month. <laughs> Whether anyone's made any sort of like partnerships, my brain is like Swiss cheese at the moment, but I swear I, I saw something from a Florida library partnering with uh, some community resource for Pride Month, but I may, I follow a bunch of different libraries on Twitter, so that may have been an out of state library. But if anyone has something like that or wants to continue the diversity discussion, you know, please do. <laughs> This is a topic that I'm very passionate about. DEI, it's very important to me. Okay, cool. Uh, Cindy dropped a link in the chat to uh, the Alachua County Library's uh, Pride section, and this is great. Love the colors, love the format. Um, yeah, you know, it's always it's always nice to see what libraries are up to for Pride Month and everything else. Um, I guess also, sorry if it seems like I'm jumping from topic to topic. I'm just thinking of things <laughs> that come to me as I remember what month it is. <laughs> <laughs> um, I know Juneteenth is coming up, and I don't know if anyone has anything planned for that. Um, I'm always interested to see what libraries are up to for Juneteenth. Oh, nice. Cindy is saying that at the bottom of the page, there is a podcast, and that they do the podcast at uh, the neighborhood branch. So that is super cool. I love podcasts. But yeah, so just sort of the floating topics, diversity. Pride Month, Juneteenth, something else, as we still have about 15-ish minutes left to discuss about whatever you guys want to talk about.
Okay, so in the chat, and I am very sorry if I pronounce your name wrong, but Elise, maybe, <laughs> is saying that. That's um, right. <laughs> yay! At one of the branches, <laughs> you guys are doing outreach at a, a Juneteenth event in the community. Oh, at Pasco. Okay. That's super cool. Um, I also just dropped into the chat the link to We Here. Um, and I don't know, I think it may have closed because I'm not seeing it on there. Oh no, it's in July. So the registration might still be open um, for the green book for libraries. That's about, um, what is the best way to summarize that? It's basically about like job hunting as a person of color in library sciences. Um, and you can read more at the link. Okay, cool. Cindy's uh, saying that they're doing something similar with three branches in Alachua County. I miss Alachua. I used to, I went to uh, UF <laughs> for my undergrad. And you guys have a Wawa's and I'm very jealous. <laughs> but that is neither here nor there. But okay, cool. It seems like, you know, you guys are doing some, um... <laughs> yeah. Go Gators! And then I came up here for my grad study so that <laughs> to go to FSU, so that's fun. <laughs> but okay, it seems like you guys have um, a pretty good amount of things going on, so that's super cool. Um, so I don't know if anyone just in general wants to share like a cool, positive thing going on at their library or whether like, you know, like an achievement or there is a term that Emily uses that I cannot remember now for the life of me. Emily, who is our uh, E-rate consultant, um, maybe a strength, I think is what she usually says, like something that's been going well for you basically at your library, if you have anything along that line, if you want to share or not, you know, don't, don't make me poke you with a topic that you don't want to talk about. <laughs> Hi everyone, uh, this is uh, Tim Royer. I'm uh, the project manager out at Lee County Libraries. Um, I wanted to uh, ask a little bit uh, on the emergency management side, as I'm new here, I've been here about a month in the position, and just kind of ask about uh, like emergency power for the libraries, if everyone has emergency power on their facilities or if it's kind of hit and miss. And I just kind of wanted to uh, get everybody's opinion on that or, or just kind of what the current position is. Also, Oyuki again at Bogoritan. We actually, um, Lisa mentioned earlier that our buildings are um, used as shelters for emergency personnel. So because of that, the library has been very fortunate in that both our buildings have generators. They've actually, um, the city has identified both of them and kind of built up the infrastructure. Um, we also, are both our libraries are newer, so I think that was part of uh, an easy transition, but we do take that into account because it does allow us to be up and running faster in case we do lose, you know, power permanently. So both buildings have ginormous um, gas generators that, you know, will power. The only thing we have to worry about is in terms of um, data, right? If like, if all the uh, the Wi-Fi goes down, then, then we're left a little bit uh, useless with our computers but we would still at least be able to be a place for, um, you know, to, to come in out of the heat, kind of like a, a, a shelter for during the day. Awesome, yeah, I'm just uh, always curious as far as that because uh, I just came out of the military and, you know, we're used to uh, power generation at so many facilities. So just mm -hmm. kind of taking a look around and seeing, um, you know, which facilities have them and, uh, like you said, it, it it's very dependent on uh, also if you have those communication tools as well. You could have the lights on, but um, without the internet, there's a lot of uh, yep. disadvantage. We have um, 
portable MiFi's, which again, you know, ours are run through, I think, a Verizon. So if Verizon goes down, then we're also down. <laughs> but in the meantime, you know, we have something to, to bridge us. Awesome. Thank you. So I guess actually, yeah, on that note, talking about um, portable Wi-Fi and portable uh, hotspots, uh, hotspots, yeah, hotspots, um, whether anyone has anything to share about that with the new FCC thing that just uh, came out and whether, you know, you guys have had, um, you know, some, some like the level of engagement with like portable uh, Wi-Fi is basically what I'm asking here, like whether you've seen them go really quickly or slowly or just as, you know, needs be. Have you been able to, like, get any? Has it been difficult? Just uh, that sort of thing. Because I do know later this month, Emily Hart, our E-Rate consultant, is going to have a webinar discussing uh, the new FCC thing in more detail, which is part of the reason why I'm <laughs> not exactly elaborating because I don't want to get it wrong and then you all show up to her webinar and are like, well, Brittany, I, I said no such thing. I said there was a thing and a thing happened. <laughs> but yes, if anyone has anything they want to share about their hotspots or portable Wi-Fi or like Wi-Fi in the parking lot, I know. Is it Alachua? Somebody is doing portable, doing Wi-Fi in the parking lot. I can't recall. All of the libraries are starting to merge together in my mind. Okay, sorry, I was just looking at the chat. So not to jump back, but Casey is saying that um, Leon County has emergency generators because they tend to serve as a comfort station uh, post-storm. And Cindy has just posted that they just started Wi-Fi to go. And I believe our official BLD account probably had retweeted that because I think I saw that on, uh, the, on my Twitter feed. Um, let me see here, sorry. <laughs> I think so. That is cool, though. I love technology. Um, but yeah, Wi-Fi. <laughs> okay, Cindy is saying Alachua County has had Wi-Fi access in the parking lot for a few years. Wi-Fi to go has been very successful. 100 units, one week checkout, and it shuts down if not returned. So. That is uh, cool. Um, while I am thinking about it, because I know I've mentioned it a few times, I don't know uh, how many of you or if any of you have access to your, or whether you are the person who uh, is managing the social media accounts for your library, but I know one thing that in general we're trying to do here at BLD is really, you know, promote, especially me, this is my job, to promote and tell uh, your, your stories and what you guys have going on. So um, I don't know if anyone is interested, but we're trying to connect more with libraries and just sort of see what you guys have going on so we can properly, you know, uh, signal boost your efforts. So if any of you are the social media person or, you know, knows that social media person, they want to get in touch with us, just, just send me an email um, and we can try to work something out because I would like to be able to because, you know, I don't I don't see everything as much as I try to, as much as I <laughs> try to pour through you guys' social media accounts. I know I always miss something, but if there's something, you know, you really want, you know, more people to see, definitely just kind of send it our way. And we'll try to get that out there, depending on what it is. But, yeah, so if anyone is that social media person, just, you know, let me know. Or maybe just kind of nudge them towards me and be like, hey. <laughs>
Okay, so there is about six-ish, five-ish minutes left before um, our hour is done, and then we all meet again next quarter. I don't have that date scheduled yet. Um, there's various other things going on, and I have, um, I'm doing a different uh, webinar in July in case anyone wants to learn about uh, financial literacy. Uh, there'll, there'll be more information for that. I don't want to uh, clog up that meeting in the last few minutes with that. But um, yeah, at some point next quarter, so that's, I don't know, hold on, February to March. Yeah, so like August, October, that's a, no, that's like three months. I will figure it out. But next <laughs> next quarter, as this is the quarterly meeting, there'll be another one of these. Um, and if anyone wants to let me know whether uh, you know, whether this time is good or this time is bad, it should be earlier, it should be later. Um, within reason, I don't want to schedule a meeting at like four because that's, I feel like by that point, we're all kind of staring at the clock. <laughs> um, but yeah, if like a different day works, like if Thursday's better, Friday's better, Monday's better, which by, <laughs> as Cindy has already said, it probably is not. But if another day works better, just let me know. Um, just, you know, send me an email or call me or email me. Um, but otherwise, uh, if, if anyone has any, you know, last minute things they want to discuss in these last few minutes, uh, go right ahead. If not, um, we've pretty much covered anything that I wanted to discuss other than I just, I really do want to reiterate that, you know, no matter what it is, if you have like a new initiative or program or it's, you know, in its second year or Anything that you have in your library that you want to talk about that you have going on, you know, email me and I'll, I can turn it into a stars article and, um, you know, once it's live, I do my best to try to email everyone to let them know so that they can, you know, share it out and look at it. But yeah, otherwise, I just want to take this opportunity to thank all of you for coming today. I really appreciate it. <laughs> Thank you for your time.